Good day, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Kevin Hogan. I'm the author of The Science of Influence, 20 other books, and uh, they've been translated into 40 other, 41 other languages now around the world. Um, it's good to have you here today. Today, seven hypnotic language patterns f to reduce resistance in really difficult situations. So here you are, you've been talking to this person over here, and now you're ready to get to yes, but somewhere along the line, you appear to have made a mistake, or two, or three, or 12, and for whatever reason, the rapport seems to be kind of weak, and you're really trying really hard to make sure that this person is going to say yes. So what do you do? Well, you have a few ways that you can ask without increasing resistance and to actually push a couple of pretty cool buttons that cause compliance. The first of these is, is a really neat uh, pattern. It's called, I don't know if. So it works like this. I don't know if this is right or wrong. I don't know whether or not you'd want to do this or not. I don't know if it's a good idea. It seems like it might be okay, but it could also be really dumb. I, I really don't know. See, I don't know if drops resistance completely. When you say, I don't know, you say the exact opposite of what every single person who's about to be manipulated, about to be persuaded against their will, is going to hear. They're going to hear stuff like, I know, I'm smart, I learned this a long time ago, you can learn this too. That's what people hear. They don't want to say yes to that. But when you say, I don't know if this is right or wrong. I don't know if this makes sense. I don't know if it makes sense to do an investment that makes 11% a year. I don't know if it makes sense to go over to that movie over there or that one over there. I, I really don't know what the best theater is. Maybe you'd have an idea because I sure don't. And as soon as you admit ignorance, especially in an area that it really doesn't matter whether you have uh, competence or confidence in, it's a really good way to see the resistance go down, all of the defenses go down. It allows the person to now make the decision, which is exactly where you were going in the first place. It just allows that person to make it on their own. The next really cool pattern that really reduces resistance in really tough situations is Imagine what would happen if, and then you fill in the proverbial blank. So imagine what would happen if we did this. Like, now here's the thing. We've already talked a couple of years ago about the word imagine, right? We know that imagine sort of just, it doesn't drop resistance. It just lets whatever is said next go into the, into the brain and be processed, right? Because nobody's going to say, you're not telling a person to buy something, you're not telling them to do something, you're not even asking them to do something, you're just saying imagine. And imagine all takes place in the brain, nothing takes place out here, right? So imagine what would happen if we went over there to that store and just looked. Or imagine what would happen if we went to a really cool restaurant and had a really nice time. Or imagine what would happen if we did our business transaction over at Chow Bella and got a chance to have some good food while we talked business. Imagine what would happen if you went to that school instead of that school when you go to college. See, imagine what would happen if allows you to get complete compliance of your thought. Okay, so the whatever thought you want to have is going to be able to just sink right in and there's other studies, we'll talk about them a different time, about the word imagine and how it works. It's, it's really cool. It sticks a long time. It's almost like um, triggering priming because it's not a prime in itself, but it triggers priming to happen for whatever you're going to suggest next so that the person's actually predisposed to do this, not just like in this moment, which is what most hypnotic language does, but in the future, a year later. It's really cool. So trust me on this for now. We'll do an entire uh, file on um, Imagine as far as uh, it, it has to do with triggering priming for the future because it's Brilliant, but for the moment, imagine what would happen if you just used imagine until I got around to telling you all the details and other cool ways you can do it too. Cool? Okay, you probably already know this is beautiful, right? Because you don't want to be the expert, even though you are. You don't want to be the answer to every question this person has, even though you probably are, or else you wouldn't be in the situation right now. You don't want to be the absolute perfect solution to everything, even though you probably are in this situation, you want to say, you know, you probably already know that what? You probably already know what the best restaurant to go to is. What is it? Just tell me, just tell me, because I don't know. 
you probably already know the best car to drive. I mean, I really don't. I don't know anything about cars. The only thing I know about cars is you get in them, you turn the key, and it, it goes. If you push it in reverse, it goes backwards. That's what I know about cars. You probably already know. So you probably already know. It presupposes that you know, and I probably don't. Cool? So once again, I'm putting myself into the sort of secondary role, into the subjugative role, and I'm giving the other person complete control. And this person at that point, when they say, like if you say, you probably already know that the market has doubled in the last 18 months. It has too. It's pretty crazy, right? This Dow is at 15,500 and just 18 months ago or 24 months ago, it was at what? 7,500, 8,000? Pretty amazing. So you probably already know that. Now, as soon as I say you probably already know, even though you didn't know that, you know that, right? It would be very hard for somebody to admit that they don't really know what I just suggested that they know. So as soon as you say you probably already know, and then you fill it in, that person is pretty much mentally and emotionally obligated to agree with whatever you say with and make it as if it's just obvious information. Now, on that same concept and that same train of thought is, would you be surprised, and I'll just stop it right there, would you be surprised, and the answer is always no to this, it's always no. Would you be surprised if, and then you can fill in anything you want, and the person's never surprised. And this is great because even though people love to hear surprises, surprise means something is blisteringly obvious. Okay, the person has to agree with it. Would you be surprised if you found out that the market doubled in the last five years? Would you be surprised if you heard that gold went up a hundred bucks an ounce in the last five days? Would you be surprised if you found out that um, bonds are actually starting to lose money and investors are, are, are losing cash that are investing in mortgage-backed securities and things like this, that there's better places to put their money? Would you be, and of course the person has to say, no, I wouldn't be surprised. Of course I know that, I'm not dumb. Of course I know that. Right, cool? All right, going back to some of the more traditional language patterns, the ones that the old guys have taught for, for quite a few years, I have a couple of favorites. And for difficult situations, they go like this. I wouldn't tell you to do this. People don't wanna to be told what to do. They don't wanna to be told even a hint of what to do. So when you say, I wouldn't tell you to go to the store and buy that. I wouldn't tell you to go, you know, and, and decide between the movies tonight. I wouldn't tell you, I wouldn't tell you anything. And when you say that, this is one of my favorite old time patterns that the old guys developed years and years ago. And I think it's a pretty cool pattern that you can use too. The other one that I really like in these kind of situations is if you could choose, like, you know, which way to go, what would you do? Like, you know, here you are, you could choose between uh, buying some gold, you could choose between um, investing in stocks, you could choose bonds. If you could choose, what would you do? and I'm an, an, an investment uh, a portfolio manager, right? Or, or I'm a certified financial planner that's talking with you. You know, if you could choose between restaurants you wanted to go to tonight, which one would you choose? These two patterns are really cool from the old days. Now, a couple that are all lumped into one. You, a lot of times people think that because they think that he wants to be stroked over there and feel really good about himself, that we should always say positive things about him. Like, you know, you're a really astute investor, I can tell. Or, you're a really sharp buyer. Or, you are a smart woman. Or, you are a wise shopper. All of this rings of being trite, bogus, completely unreal, ridiculous, and it makes you sound stupid. Here's the thing, only a moron would, would know not to do this, right? Only an idiot wouldn't invest in gold right now. Only a fool wouldn't put some of their money into stocks while the market is in a bull market. Only a, someone without a real effective working brain would not put some money into bonds just because of safety of the, of the government end. Only a jerk would be mean and do something like that. Only a dweeb would actually go and do that. See, by doing this, it sounds real, it's authentic, it's impossible to then for that person to play the role of somebody who wants to say no to whatever it is you're going to do. Because they'd be a moron or an idiot or a goofball or they'd be a dweeb or a jerk and none of those things are good. And so by assigning a negative role to the person who would not do this, whatever this is here today, that person is then going to be 
almost, not absolutely 100% certain to say yes to you, but 90% plus 90% of the time. Cool? Okay, guys, have a great day. I'll see you here next time.